Welcome everyone to another edition of Get Your Game On, the channel dedicated to immersive gaming experiences. Now recently I've been spending a lot of time in my Vario Aero headset, getting to know it, putting it through its paces for a full in-depth review later on the channel. But after experiencing this in DCS, I couldn't wait for the review to come out. I had to share with you guys the experience I was having in the Vario Aero in DCS. It is amazing. Now, I will caution you. DCS and the Arrow, at least for me, had a pretty severe distortion issue when I started it. Um, it this is not the warping issue. This is just a, a overall distortion issue that was very noticeable. But don't worry, I found the fix for it. We've got links posted in the description below, and I'm also going to cover it briefly in this video. So, I've flown the F-18 in DCS, but I have yet to try it in the F-14. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to take the F-14 Tomcat up for the first time ever in the Vario Aero. So let's get to it. Okay, before you can actually start enjoying the Aero in DCS, there's one quick fix that you have to perform. Otherwise, you're going to feel like you're swimming around in a fishbowl when you start DCS. When I first started it without applying this fix, I almost got motion sick just from the menu. It was so bad. So trust me, apply this quick, easy fix before you even fire DCS up. And let's go through the process. So I've got the link listed in the description below, and that'll bring you to this page here. And it's a pretty simple process. Um, basically, it's the same process that they used for cross-eye alignment. And you'll see right here, it says cross-eye alignment. Don't let that bother you. Uh, this is the fix that will apply to the arrow. So what you're going to do is you're going to go uh, to your DCS directory. And in this case, you can see I've got my directory here. And you're going to add one simple line. So the directory is users and then whatever your name is for your computer, save game DCS, and you go to the config tool. And likely, you will not have this auto exec config file. Uh, when I first went here, I did not have it. So we'll go ahead and delete that real quick, and I'll show you the process that you'll likely go through. It's very simple. All you do is go into this config directory, and you're going to go to new, and you're just going to start a new text document. And in this, you're going to call it auto exec dot uh, config okay and it's going to say are you sure you want to do that and you say yes and so let's go ahead and, and edit that open it up and it's blank as you can say we just created it so there's obviously nothing here so simply come down or up in this case to right here copy this line and pop that in there and save it so just uh, save and then you can close that out and again you're gonna see right there auto exec config that's all you have to do as far as files go and then we're gonna go ahead and fire up DCS and I'll show you the rest of the process very very simple and so here we are in DCS and as you can see we have this new pop-up window as the result of your edits to the auto exec config and from here, one more simple step, come over here and click this swap top and bottom, and then come over to this other side and click swap top and bottom, and then be sure to click save and close, and that's all you gotta do. And then we're ready to play DCS, and it's properly configured for the Vario Aero. So let's get to it. All right, so here we are in the motion sim. So we're going to utilize the headset, the earbuds, and the microphone that came with the Vario headset today. So you'll be able to hear the quality of the microphone for the rest of the video. So once I put this on, we'll switch over to the mic audio from here, and then we'll uh, see how she sounds. So let's get this F-14 going, shall we? So here we are in the F-14 for the first time ever in the Vario Aero and holy cow. So in the G2, I have a real hard time reading a lot of the text that's on the, uh, on the panels because it's old and worn out. 
this is a definite improvement over that. So, um, yeah, very good. Man, <laughs> the reflections in the glass of the, like, the fuel quantity and everything are amazing. Man, this is, this is cool. This is really cool. All right. So we got throttle. We've got a little mission here. We're tasked with bombing a terrorist compound that's situated in one of the palaces. Uh, it's at Waypoint 1. We're going to go do that. And then, man, this looks so good. And then um, I had a lot of questions and requests to see what the motion platform does when you actually crash the plane. So against my better judgment, I'm actually going to go out there and uh, after we bomb that terrorist compound, I'm going to go ahead and, and purposely crash. So you'll get to see some, some motion out of this thing. So let's get this started. As we learned from uh, before, the uh, voice attack needs to have a quiet moment before you initiate it. So, salute. And there you see it works perfectly. All right, we've got the salute. We're gonna throttle up. All right, no afterburner on the F-14 when you launch. And here we go. Man, that never gets old. That is so cool. Gear up, flaps up. All right, so this is a pretty short trip. Um, let's get Jester on station. Alright, so Jester, I need you to set up our navigation. We want to go to waypoint one. Okay, switching to two point one. We're going to put this on cruise so we have that marker. Looks like we're pretty much heading there. Let's go after burner. Let's get our bombs ready. Arm that. Um, this plane is awesome. This thing is so fast. Absolutely love it. All right, Jester, we got to get the arms armed. So let's go with uh, air to ground weapons. We only have two GBU 10s. And let's go ahead and let's fuse those. Uh, let's go fuse. Let's go nose and tail. And then one last thing, Jester. I want you to drop a pair. All right. Little roll for fun. All right, here. The colors look really rich in this thing. Um, these panels are pretty amazing on that side. And there's not so much a warping on the edges in DCS. Um, it's more like you hit the edge of the sweet spot and it's a little blurry when you get out to the edges. But I'm not seeing that dramatic warping that I saw in squadrons earlier. So it's all pretty, pretty smooth. It gets just a touch blurry out at the edges. but And the field of view is definitely improved. This thing has a lot better field of view than the G2. Um, nails at 6 o'clock. All right, I guess we better th think about setting a bomb here. on the city. I haven't flown the F-14 in a bit, so the analog gauges I'm used to having my airspeed and altitude in my HUD, so definitely old, older technology here. Alright, so the palace is right at the end of the airfield over here. Laser armed. Now witness this fully armed and operational battle station. <laughs> I've never heard that from Jester. <laughs> that was funny. Star Wars reference for you nerds. And I am in that category as well. Definitely a Star Wars nerd. Alright, there's our uh, palace that we're going to bomb. Master Arm. And let's go down and see if we can get some bombs on that sucker. All right. Looks good. Bombs away. 
Have to burn over. Um, nail uh, seven o'clock. See if we get any impact here. Two good hits. All right. So, in the interest of brevity, we're going to get a little motion here, and I am going to kamikaze that thing. I'm wondering if I can actually get. I'm going to try to rip the wings off. I know the F-14, you can pull those wingtips off by doing some severe maneuvers. I don't know if I'll be able to do that or not, but we're going to try. This is for all you people out there that left comments and asked me about the uh, crashing this thing. Hey, it looks like we're in a falling leaf. All right. Well... Uh, yeah. <laughs> and I don't remember my spin recovery. I think it was go into it. Oh, I guess Jester doesn't want to play anymore. Alright. Well, here we go. And... Ta-da! So that was that. That's what it's like. Uh, I've had a lot worse, but that, that was a little jarring. So, All right, so <laughs> that was the experience in the F-14. I'm going to switch back to my other mic now because I'm going to pull this off. If you are into DCS and you can afford it, this headset is the best experience I've ever had in DCS. And it's one of the reasons I actually purchased this headset. So uh, I'm happy it didn't disappoint. So stay tuned. Um, like and subscribe if you don't want to miss my full review of the Arrow. Uh, that'll be coming up in uh, the next few weeks. And uh, until next time, remember to get your game on.